It doesn't happen often that I have a new theory for the entire universe on my desk. But today I have one to report about, the Cosmohedron, which supposedly describes the quantum behavior of the entire cosmos. The subject is being studied intensively. This paper comes from the group around Akani Hamet, who has in the past decade worked on the amplitudehedron that we talked about in an earlier episode. Amplitudehedron might sound like a rejected Transformers character but it's actually a new method to make calculations in particle physics. And new methods can bring new insights, which is why many physicists hope that it'll also help make sense of how to combine quantum physics with gravity. This new paper is a step into this direction. The cosmohedron is based on the amplitudehedron. The new paper dropped on the archive some weeks ago. In the author's own words, it's a note, but at 55 pages long, it's as much a note as Mount Everest is a hill. I understand barely half of it, but that's 50% better than not having read it, so I'll try to explain what I think they're doing. This paper is about the wave function of the universe. Wave functions are what we use in quantum physics to describe particles and how they interact. It's a tool from which we calculate the probabilities of measurement results. In particle physics, typically what you want to know is how likely one particle is to interact with another, or how long it'll take for it to decay. You calculate all this from the wave function. However, in principle, there are wave functions for everything, not just particles. There are wave functions for cats, people, planets, and even the entire universe. In practice, of course, we don't use wave functions for people because they'd be so complicated they'd be totally useless. We also don't need them because quantum effects of people are so small as to be unmeasurable that so if you figure out how to be in two places at once, please let me know in the comments. However, if we look at the universe as a whole, that's even larger, but quantum physics becomes useful again. This is because if you go back into the very early universe, then matter was just a soup of hot plasma. And if you go back even further, physicists think that our universe started out just with quantum fluctuations. This is why the wave function of the universe is interesting because we needed to understand how our universe was born. It's not just a mathematical problem because these quantum fluctuations in the early universe determine how matter will be distributed later on, so they have observable consequences. The temperature fluctuations in the cosmic microwave background, for example, and the structures of galactic filaments were seeded by those very quantum fluctuations, and their exact distribution can hold information about just what happened in the early universe. And this is what they want to calculate in the paper, the wave function of the entire universe to find out how the universe came to be the way it is. In this wave function, there are a lot of things going on. Particles are constantly created and then collide with each other and annihilate. Usually physicists deal with this by using Feynman diagrams. You've probably seen these diagrams. Each line represents a particle. You have lines going in, stuff going on in the middle, and then lines going out. These these diagrams are really just a handy way to encode certain integrals. They tell us what we need to calculate. The problem is that there are infinitely many of those Feynman diagrams and we can't calculate them all. So we calculate the most important ones, the ones that make the biggest contribution first, and then add finer details with more diagrams. But this is incredibly cumbersome. And while it's now done on computers, it still takes a long time. In the new paper now, they propose a different way to calculate the wave function of the entire universe. It's based on polygons not on Feynman diagrams, but the idea is similar. The polygons are shorthand notation for the contributions to the wave function and tell you what to calculate. Each polygon is an interaction of particles like a Feynman diagram, and each line is the momentum of a particle. Momentum is conserved, so if you take all the momentum of particles that go into and those that go out of an interaction, their momenta need to add up to zero. 
this means they form a polygon. And if there are further interactions among those particles, that'll make further lines inside the polygon. But any polygon can be taken apart into triangles. This is called a triangulation. So in this approach, you have a systematic way to build up larger polygons from the smaller ones. They are nested, as they say in the paper. So you can build up the entire cosmos from these triangles. And that, here comes the relevant part, is much easier to sum than Feynman diagrams. So like with the amplitohedron, this is a more powerful method to calculate quantum effects. In this paper, they don't actually calculate anything that could be measured more work is needed, as they say. But I find it interesting because it could build a bridge to quantum gravity. This is because in the early universe, we also have to deal with the quantum behavior of space and time. And the formalism in the paper can be used for that as well. So it has some quantum gravity built in already. Even Albert likes that idea. By the way, this video comes with a quiz that will let you check how much you remember. I know this is all quite abstract, but I believe it isn't only possible, but indeed plausible that fundamentally, deep down, the universe is just some abstract maths thing. A network, a tangle of strings, or maybe a polygon. Though personally, I'm hoping it turns out to be a giant rubber duck just because I want to see the faces of physicists when they find out. Yes, I've been talking about quantum physics again. It's definitely my favorite topic. But did you know that I have a quantum mechanics course that you can take for free on Brilliant? My course will help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. Brilliant offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Whether you want to know more about large language models or algebra, want to learn coding in Python or know how computer memory works, Brilliant has you covered. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. And they're adding new courses each month. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.